So till, till here, I think you people know how you are going to differentiate between the upper motor neuron and the lower motor neuron. Okay, then after that, so we will go one by one to locate the lesion of the lower motor neuron. Okay. So from here the lower motor neuron is start and probably roots and it made a plexus but I will make a simple diagram here. Okay. Here. So in the lower motor neuron lesion, so for, first of all we will deal with the problem in the muscles. Can you guess what are the muscles disease? So classically I think if people know muscular dystrophy that may be the Duchenne muscular dystrophy, in the adult maybe the Baker muscular dystrophy, these are the classical examples. But mind that there are other muscle disease as well. There may be the different inflammatory muscle disease like, like that you can get in case of dermatomyositis or maybe the viral myositis or the drug induced my, my, myopathies, these are the muscle disease. Then what will be the history of the muscle disease if somebody has some muscle disease that what we call the myopathy. To understand regarding the muscle disease, you have to remember last time when you run for the marathon. So after running in the marathon, what will happen? The next day you will have the pain, well, probably throughout the body, but more at the level of the thigh. So what will happen? You have the difficulty to, to take a standing position from the squatting position. When you are defecating, yeah, yeah, we mean that. So you will have the proximal muscle weakness, you will have the pain, and that's that that occurs bilaterally. So the muscles disease are classically characterized by the weakness here muscles myopathy okay okay think about yourself okay so if you have a muscles disease first of all it's unilateral or bilateral yeah bilateral it is bilateral the the, the problem in is in the both the legs are probably in the both arms okay so probably symmetrical symmetrical okay and what do you think is the proximal or distal the bulk of the muscles is more at the proximal so probably proximal weakness and the, the proximal weakness is characterized in the lower limb by difficulty in, in, in standing to stand uh, from the squatting position that is the classical history of the proximal weakness so in the myopathy we will have the weakness in the bilateral, bilateral, symmetrical and the proximal weakness. Sometimes there may be the pain if it is a, if there is a myositis or like the, if there is inflammatory component there can be the pain. But other than that do you think that your patient will have the other sensory features like the numbness? Probably no. because this the, the sensory knobs are the intact here so absence of the sensory symptoms like the numbness or maybe the tingling sensation will, will suggest the myopathy do you think your patient will have the feature of the bladder and the bowel incontinence probably no because the bladder and the bowel is basically controlled by the spinal cord so the normal bladder and bowel functions and do you think your patient will be in the altered sensory in a myopathies? No, because the sensory may be basically maintained by the cortex. So, so what you understand regarding the myopathy is that you, our patient will have the definitely will have the weakness if he or she have the myopathies. That weakness will be in the more in the proximal muscles. That is, weakness will be the symmetrical and the bilateral but your patient will not have the sensory feature like the numbness, tingling sensation, 
your patient will have the normal bladder and bowel functions and the your patient will have the normal sensorium if there are the features then always think about the myopathy okay okay now after discussing regarding the myopathy now here here here, here we are going to come here can you tell me any disease of the neuromuscular neuromuscular disease yeah the classical one is myasthenia gravis myasthenia gravis myasthenia gravis there are also like lambert eaton myasthenic syndrome limbs in the short form called but myasthenia gravis so we'll just discuss about the myasthenia gravis what happens in the myasthenia gravis in the myasthenia gravis there is a antibody which blocks the acetylcholine receptor yeah okay there is an antibody which blocks the acetylcholine receptor in a patient with the myasthenia gravis then what happen let's suppose you wake up at, uh, in the morning okay now you you will start doing the activities what will happen so you have the acetylcholine that acetylcholine will and probably you will have some pre acetylcholine receptor as well oh then you can you can do your activities in the normally but the, those acetylcholine receptors are already blocked by the antibodies okay then what will happen then as the time passes you start feeling the feeling more fatigue and that is what is the history of the myasthenic patient will be so your patient will be all right when they start or they they initiate the any activities but later on the muscles power will start decreasing mean that they get fatigue they cannot sustain the performance so uh, in the beginning or in the initial phase the myasthenic patient will have the weakness only in the evening time but the later like i have i have I've seen a case of myasthenic gravis so if they are singing like if they are singing a song and what will happen they can sing the 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 initial part of the song nicely but the later part of the song they they could not sing they start having the dysphonia okay and if they are like chewing something in the beginning they will have no problem but if they on going when they are chewing the foods then after few minutes they start having difficulty and they will have the dysphagia okay so in the beginning they don't have any problem then can you guess which is the most active muscles that you can see in our body yeah the most active muscles is 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 in your eyes eye lids okay probably this lps levator palpebral superis that you have to blink you have to open the eyes frequently in the daytime then what will happen if you are in a patient with myasthenic gravis their eye lid will get fatigue and they will start having the ptosis and even if they, they they will they will have the fatigability in the extraocular muscles and they can have the diplopia as well so if somebody has the ptosis if somebody has the diplopia if somebody has the fatigability if somebody has the evening time aggravation in the motor weakness then probably you may have to think about the myasthenic gravis but what do you think do they have the sensory symptoms probably no because the sensory nerves are intact do you think they will have the any problem in the bladder and bowel probably no do you think they will have the problem in the sensory probably no so motor weakness usually fatigability ptosis diplopia dysphagia dysphonia will suggest the myasthenia gravis or neuromuscular junction disorder but absent sensory symptoms normal bladder and bowel and the normal sen sensory limb should be there to level somebody to have the neuromuscular disease but this 
night time or evening time aggravation of the symptoms is this reversal in a patient with the Lambert-Eaton syndrome where with every activity there will be the improvement in the muscle contraction in case of the limbs and that is what is the difference between the myasthenia and the Lambert-Eaton syndrome. Okay. That is Lambert Atten syndrome is probably classic is a, you can see as a paraneoplastic feature of the different carcinoma classically you can get in case of the lung cancer. Okay, that is quite clear. Okay, then after knowing uh, regarding the neuromuscular disease, okay, I think you people are understanding. Then let us go to the peripheral nerve. Can you tell me any disease of the peripheral nerve? Classical one is diabetes. The diabetes is probably one of the most common cause of the neuropathy. And the fascinating one may be the guillain barre syndrome, chronic inflammatory demyelinating polyneuropathy, and toxin induced polyneuropathy, lead induced polyneuropathy, arsenic induced polyneuropathy. So there are so many neuropathies here. Leprosy probably. So what happens in case of the neuropathy? So nerve is not just a, just a part of the... So depending upon the involvement of the motor component or the sensory component, your patient will have the feature, a clinical feature. But to understand regarding the peripheral neuropathy, your patient will have the feature of the motor symptoms because if there is an involvement of the motor symptoms. Like your patient will have the weakness. Like it depends upon what type of lesion is that, it, it, whether it is a demyelinating or axonal. But uh, the more peripheral nerve is the axonal as you can see in the classically in case of the diabetes. In case of the axonal polyneuropathy, there is a distal weakness, just in contrast with the weakness of the myopathy. So your patient will have the distal weakness. So the, what will be the history of the distal weakness? So there will be the history of the slippage of the slippers. There will be the history of the abnormality of the gait, where you, your, your patient can't flex or can't dorsiflex or the plantar flex the ankle. So improperly, so they may have some get problem, but basically if they will have the history of the slippage of the slipper in case of the peripheral nerve disease, classically in case of the axonal polyneuropathy. So other than the motor symptoms, at, as it is a peripheral nerve disease, they may have the, some sensory symptoms. They may have the positive sensory symptoms like the pain, tingling, burning sensation they may have the negative sensation like the numbness. So if somebody has the motor weakness with the sensory symptoms, then think about the neuropathy. And as we all know, even the cranial nerves are a part of the peripheral nerves. They may have the symptoms of the cranial nerve involvement. So sometimes in a patient with the GBS, you may have the feature of the bilateral facial nerve paralysis. So basically, you need to understand that if there is a nerve disease, then they may have the motor symptoms, they may have the sensory symptoms. That's it. Okay. Then there, there, there will be the root involvement, the plexus involvement, and this will be the out of scope of this class. But basically, I want to discuss regarding the anti-horn cell disease. In the child, the polio is common and in the probably motor neuron disease is another fascinating disease of the anterior horn cell disease. And if somebody has an anterior horn cell disease like motor neuron disease, as I have already told, they will have the weakness, they will have the weakness, they will have the atrophy, but it will be asymmetrical. Okay, first of all, asymmetrical in onset. So your patient will have the weakness here, your patient will have the atrophied and asymmetrically it will start from the one side and it will go to the another side and may, may get generalized that what you can guess, get in case of the anterior horn cell disease. 
but you need to think about the fasciculations. If you see the fasciculations in your patient, the anterior cell disease is one of the differential diagnosis. But in case of anterior cell disease, there will be no involvement of the sensory symptoms. So in case of motor neuron disease, your patient is not going to complain about the any sensory symptoms like tingling or numbness, okay, because the it will not get involved in case of the anterior cell disease. That is what you need to understand, but it's a big chapter. We'll definitely discuss in the in the coming updates. Okay. So these all are about the lower motor neuron lesion. So again, I will summarize. In case of the myopathy, there will be the proximal, bilateral, and symmetrical weakness. They may have the pain, but they do not have any sensory symptoms. They, they do not have the bladder and bowel involvement and their sensory is absolutely normal. In case of the neuromuscular junction disorder, definitely they do not have the weakness initially. They have the fatigability. The, they, they will have the weakness usually in the evening time or after, re, after repeating the activities. They may have the ptosis, they may have the ophthalmoplasia presenting as the diplopia, they may have the dysphonia. That is what is about the neuromuscular junction disorder. In the peripheral nerve, they may have the both motor as well as the sensory symptoms and the weakness usually start from the distal part of the body. And in the anterior cell disease, the weakness is asymmetrical, the muscles get atrophied earlier and you can see the classical fasciculations in case of motor, horn, uh, motor neuron disease that is anterior cell disease and they do not they do not have the sensory symptoms and they do not they have the normal uh, sensory as well. This is what is about the lower motor neuron lesion.